welcome to worship at North Middletown Christian Church on this, the first Sunday after Christmas. In today's worship service, you will be led by our music director, Doug Price, as we enjoy a hymn singing of our favorite carols. You'll also be led at the table by our elder, Charlie Heberlin. We invite you to light a candle as we light ours and to gather your communion elements so that you can join us at the table of the Lord. We continue to say Merry Christmas as it is still the Christmas season and we wish you all a Happy New Year.
holy living light of God, you are our reassuring presence. Let this assurance grow in our lives each day so we can be a present of assurance to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. May it be so. Amen. to the prayer needs of our community. We shared some by name before our worship service began. So I want us to remember those people who are in need of God's healing prayer and presence, and those people who are on our prayer list, and those who reside within our hearts. God knows every situation and every need. So let us just take a moment to commune with God in silence, 
Then I will pray on the church's behalf and we will close by reciting the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you for drawing us together as your church today so that we can worship and praise your name. We thank you for coming to us as a baby in the manger to show us how to live, that by following him we can draw closer to the heart of God. We pray, O oh God, that Christ will be born anew within us, and that we will bear Christ to the world as you call us to. As we bear that light, we know that there are still places of darkness, and we pray for those places of darkness. We pray for the violence in the world, where people are huddled in fear, where people are fleeing and crossing borders, trying to find safety. We ask, O oh God, that the light of Christ will shine brightly in those situations, that peace will be found, and that safety will be assured. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in the darkness of loneliness, disease, and addiction. We pray that the church will shine its bright light into these situations, offering hope and comfort and simply our ministry of presence. Help us be the people who offer a shoulder to lean on, a hand to hold. Help us realize that in our ministry we do not need to have the answers. We do not need to fix other people's situations. And we do not need to stay away from discomfort because we fear we do not have the right words. We know that your grace covers us and that you call us to show up and to be the hands and feet of Christ where people have trouble, trouble perceiving your presence. God, we ask specifically for prayers of healing for those who are on our prayer list. There are many in our congregation who are suffering right now. We ask that you ease their pain, increase their strength, provide comfort to them and their family members and caregivers. Give them a measure of your comfort, grace, and hope to help them endure what they need to go through. And we ask God that your will is being done, even in ways that we cannot perceive it. God, as we follow your Son, we follow the star, the light that shows us the way to him. Help us be a church of strength. Help us witness to our community, to be peace and reconciliation in our homes, our workplaces, our extended relationships, but especially right here in the community you call us to serve, North Middletown. We pray that where there is need, we will be there. Where anyone needs to know your presence and love, that they will recognize it in us. We thank you, O oh God, for this time. It is a liminal space, a time of endings, but also a time of new beginnings. So help us, O oh God, as we usher in this new calendar year, to let go of that which holds us back. Help us let go of fear, resistance. Reassure us that you are with us and that you are guiding us to be strong ministers in your name and to be the church of your Son in this world. We pray this in his holy name and in the way he taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Isaiah 62, 1 through 3. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. And Galatians 4, 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading comes from Luke 2, beginning in verse. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. And at that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, this is your chance, people. 
If we have not sung your favorite hymn or Christmas carol, this is your chance. I will tell you that later in the service, we're going to sing 162 and 149. But all the other carols, all the other songs between uh, one pages 119 and 177 are yours. If you would like to call out a number, then Doug will entertain your request. I'll give you a second to find that area in your in your uh, hymnal. Verse 1 and 4 of 148. And then you'll be ready.
145. 145. Oh, excellent. Let's do one and four. Thank you.
suggestions. And now we will transition to our time of communion. Was that a look of disappointment, Diana? Did you get yours in? I got it in. Okay. <laughs> there was kind of a look like, oh. Uh, we will prepare to receive this holy meal by singing number 162. What child is this?
seems I always admired in African American churches was their lining out of hymns. It was a heuristic device, and it was an intensification of the communication itself. When I get to your part and the institution, I will line out a portion and you follow afterwards. For I have received from the Lord uh, what I have also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Good morning once again, and if you have not already done so, please take a moment now to fill out your welcome card. Uh, an important act for us to engage in is always gratitude. It is the one thing that changes your entire outlook on life. And so our act of worship at this point in our service is not to collect money, although that might seem like what we're doing. The point of this time of worship is to give thanks to God. And so we can do that in many ways. We can do that with our prayers. We can do it with our gratitudes written on a card and shared with the congregation. And we can also do that by giving a portion of what we have already received. This is a time of year where we are giving and receiving. And it makes us realize that we truly have so many blessings. And it's really not the material things that matter in this life. It's what we can do in service for others. So let us show the light of Christ to other people in our community and world by giving generously to the ministries and the mission of this church. Let us give.
the greatest gift we can ever receive. Lord, unwrap our hearts and open us to receive the presence of this gift once again. Help us as your church follow that light and be the light for other people. Strengthen our ministries and our witness to those who need to hear the story of the good news of your Son. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. And in this next year, cultivate in us a sense of perceiving the blessings as they are happening so that our lives might be enriched and we can enrich the lives of others. Amen. As your invitation of discipleship, I invite you over the course of the next 24 hours to reflect on how you have changed and grown in your discipleship over this past year. And in what ways is God calling you to strengthen your faith in the next? Let us close our service by singing hymn number 149, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Thank you for worshiping with the Congregation of North Middletown Christian Church 
We are located at 1976 Thatcher's Mill Road in North Middletown, Kentucky. We are affiliated with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. You can find out more about our denomination at www.disciples.org. You can also find our church's website at northmiddletownchristianchurch.org or follow us on Facebook. You are invited to join us anytime you are able as we welcome all in our sanctuary and at the table of the Lord. Once again, Merry Christmas and the happiest new year.